Welcome back to Winter in Vermont, where the weather has been kind of unpredictable. Mostly it's been chilly, but for two days before Christmas, it rained and melted most of our snow before turning back to ice. To give you an idea of what that looked like, here is our local swimming hole you may remember from last summer. And this is what it looked like as we traveled for the holidays, trying to get out of town before the flash freeze. And here's a hemlock tree from our property. I took this picture in June. And this is what it looked like after the Christmas windstorm. Now that we're back, Charles can resume work on the interior of the yurt. He has a new pile of lumber to frame up the interior walls and some fire bricks for the batch box style rocket mass heater. A rocket mass heater burns cleaner than a typical wood stove because the design of its burn chamber allows for much more complete combustion of the wood. And it's also more efficient because the heat is stored in a large thermal mass so you can use much less firewood and you can burn a fire for a short time to heat a space for much longer. The small burn chamber heats up a steel barrel that acts as a radiator to heat up the room in the short term while the fire is burning. Then the exhaust duct runs through a bench made of something like masonry, rock, or cob, which is a mixture of sand, clay, and straw. This heats the room for many hours even after the fire goes out because most of the heat stays in the building instead of escaping through the chimney with the exhaust. In our case, the tubes from the radiant floor heat will also pass through the bench, transferring the heat to an even larger thermal mass. It's all an experiment at this stage, but we are hoping this system will help us heat the yurt effectively despite its obvious shortcomings in the insulation department. After some research, Charles decided to build a variation on a rocket mass heater called a batch box heater. I'll put a link to the website with these open source designs in the description below our video. This diagram shows the core of the heater, which will be built from fire bricks. The traditional rocket stove is fed vertically from the top. It has a, a J channel, is what they call it. The traditional J-channel is fairly small opening, basically the same size as your flue, whereas a batch stove is kind of more like a uh, traditional wood stove in that you feed it from the front and you can fill it with a lot more wood. You can stack it full. This is ceramic board. It's an insulation. The I mean, this is concrete board underneath it anyway, but it's not going to burn, but this is to keep heat from going down into the floor too much. This, the core is where it'll really heat up probably up to 2,000 degrees in here. So I'm just trying to protect the structure of the floor underneath from getting too hot. And how will you put those bricks together? I'll use a high temp mortar, basically to glue them all together. I have to cut them to the right size to make the flue. You can see this sticking out, it'll be cut off in half here and then cut off that way. There's a little channel in here where it goes into the flue and speeds up the airflow, like a Bernoulli effect here. And all of these are uh, well-defined as to their dimensions, what they need to be. So even these two bricks I need to cut up a little more to make this a little higher. And then this flue has to be six by six. So I'll be cutting an inch and a half off each of these bricks. Good morning. We are having a warm spell here. The daytime highs are above freezing, so most of our snow has melted and Charles didn't even build a fire in the yurt today. He's cutting the fire bricks with a tile saw to make them the right size for the batch box heater core. How did the cutting go? 
much better on a tile saw than a grinder. Charles ended up a few bricks short on this project, so he switched gears. I'm just getting ready, kind of like I did with the electrical pipe coming up. I have to cut the hardy backer out, so I'm just using an old blade. Same one I did to cut some of the hardy backer on the outside to cut out spots where the holes might be going through. There'll be a couple of holes for vents, a hole for waste septic line. I'm just taking out areas that are underneath the, the wall, so in case I need to drill holes through it. I left Charles back in the yurt, drilling some very noisy holes in the floor. And I brought you down to the trail camera, where I'm changing out the battery. I hope it's quiet enough that you can hear me over the noise. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what's happening with Dharma. Dharma is the Chihuahua mix that we brought here with us from Texas. I've had him since longer than I've known Charles. And Dharma has a heart condition, a degenerative valve disease. He did so well for so many years, not exhibiting any symptoms. But now he's got a cough that is a telltale sign of heart failure. And that in combination with how much his legs have deteriorated over the past few months and the fact that he's blind and deaf and incontinent, I think it's about time to make a phone call and get an appointment for a euthanasia. So I'm going to miss him very much and I will dedicate the end of this video to the memory of Dharma. And I'll share some pictures of when he was a young and healthy dog. <laughs>